Does NASA actually give up on Hubble? This is a question given after NASA officials rejected Jared Isaacman's proposal to save Hubble with SpaceX Dragon. One of the drivers behind this decision is the spacecraft's lack of technical capabilities. Of course, that is not the biggest reason. Honestly, the national agency has been hatching a bolder plan than ever with their great observers. Yeah, a giant vehicle like SpaceX Starship, not Dragon, is their top priority. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope is not just a simple telescope, but above all, it carries enormous scientific, spiritual, and economic value. Being a large space telescope orbiting Earth, it has made more than one million observations, including detailed pictures of the birth and death of stars, galaxies billions of light years away, and comet pieces crashing into Jupiter's atmosphere. Scientists have learned a lot about the universe from these pictures, especially in estimating the age and size of the universe. In spiritual terms, this iconic telescope is among NASA's great observatories and was launched in 1990 aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery during STS-31. Most notably, it is seen as the most productive science mission in the history of NASA, but is also the most expensive science mission in the National Agency's history. Hubble's cumulative costs are estimated to be about $11.3 billion in 2015 dollars, which include all subsequent servicing costs, but not ongoing operations. It's safe to say that due to its great scientific, spiritual, and economic significance, NASA is always devoted to keeping it alive in space as much as possible. This explains why, throughout Hubble's history, NASA has conducted five expensive servicing missions to extend its lifespan from 15 years to decades. However, the serious aging situation of this great space watcher and the shortages in terms of both means and finance may have changed NASA's mind. In 2022, Polaris Dawn Commander and billionaire Jared Isaacman offered an attractive suggestion that he'd foot the bill to take a maintenance crew aboard SpaceX Dragon to Hubble. According to that, under Polaris's second mission, he would partner with SpaceX to perform a boost to Hubble and possibly service it like NASA used to do, all for free. Polaris is a three-mission private astronaut series flying with SpaceX hardware that plans to run the first-ever commercial spacewalk as soon as this year, with Polaris Dawn. However, most NASA officials said no to him. The given reasons include Polaris has not performed a spacewalk yet that the SpaceX EV suits have not yet been tested in space, that reaching Hubble is difficult even for NASA astronauts, and that any spacewalk near the telescope poses a risk of damage to it. When it comes to this incident, the space community has its own thoughts. If the Polaris's unprofessional astronauts cannot meet NASA's requirement for a Hubble rescue mission, NASA will take full responsibility for the personnel, and they can book reservations on SpaceX's vehicles to carry their astronauts. Because the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft does not have a robotic arm to revolve and position the telescope to make spacewalking easier, SpaceX Starship will do that instead. An interesting idea is to equip Starship with a version of Canadarm. Canadarm, or Canadarm-1, is a series of Canadian robotic arms that were used on the Space Shuttle orbiters to deploy, maneuver, and capture payloads. It was also utilized in Hubble's previous rescue missions helping to retrieve the telescope and firmly mount the instrument onto a platform in the shuttle's huge cargo bay. Although such a robotic mission, as Jared Isaacman said, may be a taxpayer expense depending on what NASA wants to do, I'm sure that it would be much cheaper than the missions on shuttle, mainly due to Starship's low cost per launch. With the volume and payload capacity of SpaceX's Starship, it should be fairly easy to fit a robotic arm and other fittings from the space shuttles. You could even use the design of part of the shuttle orbiter pressurized crew module as a start, for example, for the arm control and the airlock. Shuttle-type fuel cells could be used, along with some experimental deployable solar panels. NASA should ask SpaceX to start thinking about it now since Hubble often needs a servicing mission to replace some components. On the other hand, some analysis indicated that it would be quite a job to fit a Canadarm to a Starship depending on what configuration of Starship you start with. Canadarm is long and needs a large cargo bay door to reach out of, so the cargo Starship variant could be a suitable choice. Also on the shuttle was a large control panel to manage and control the Canadarm. Fitting a suitable control station would probably be much harder than providing the electrical power for the arm. Do you try to use one of the Canadarms saved from the shuttle program and cannibalize a shuttle for the control panel? Or have a new one built? 
In 2019, there was a news that Canada would develop and contribute a smart robotic system, Canadarm3, that will repair and maintain the gateway. Being evolved from Canadarm2, Canadarm3 will be an expanded version with enhanced AI systems. The CSA's website says that Canada's smart robotic system and other autonomous computer systems will tend to the gateway when no humans are on board, including operating science experiments aboard the lunar outpost. The combination of Starship and Canadarm3 will help to reduce the risk for astronauts in dangerous missions and cut down the cost significantly. So how about you? Do you prefer the idea of equipping Canadarm3 with Starship to rescue Hubble? Say yes if you agree. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. In my personal view, I am happy to see this unique combination used in important space missions, and I'm pretty sure NASA would be too. But most likely they will apply it in practice in future missions, not Hubble service missions. So why? An unavoidable truth is, despite large efforts, that the telescope is aging and continues to be constantly bombarded with potentially damaging radiation from space. A reboost or enhancement might become moot if critical components break. Keith Kalinowski, a retired Hubble operations expert, is one of the first to realize the problem. In an email to a Hubble manager at NASA, Kalinowski wrote, I'm very wary truly of predicting failures and I'll forever be a Hubble hugger, but there does come a time when you have to ask whether putting more money and effort into making more Hubble data might provide less return on investment than putting the same money and effort into new mission. Kalinowski's voice may represent the voice of the American astronomy community. From 2019 to 2021, the U.S. astronomy community was engaged in a planning exercise for the coming decade and beyond. Also, NASA is planning the development of the new great observatories. The result of that effort is the decadal survey pathways to discovery in astronomy and astrophysics for the 2020s. Commonly known as Astra 2020, it envisages an ambitious set of new great observatories as the community's top priority. The new great observatories, some of which are shown in this picture, would collect measurements that span the electromagnetic spectrum from far IR to X-rays with orders of magnitude gain in capabilities over their renowned predecessors, the Spitzer Space Telescope, the Hubble Space Telescope, the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, and the Chandra X-ray Observatory. The early design concepts contained the Louvoir Observatory, Origins Space Telescope, and the Lynx X-ray Observatory, the SpaceX Starship launch vehicle is expected to bring those observatories to space before the middle of the century. To keep within the NASA astrophysics budget, however, their launch dates have been pushed to the 40s and 50s. While there are many discussions around this forbidding timeline, mostly because of the shortage of competent experts at that point, in terms of Starship's readiness term, that timeline is totally feasible. Based on Starship's tight timeline for the present, the vehicle has the capability to be operational and server for NASA's Artemis III mission in 2026. Astrophysics missions to space have always been tightly constrained by the capabilities of the launchers, which have not changed substantially in two decades. The three changes that Starship would bring are a much larger mass to orbit, much wider cargo bays and no increase in, and potentially lowering the cost per launch. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.